everybody. Um, I don't feel like I can say hello without doing a wave. So I hope that doesn't look too silly waving to um, waving to you all out there. Um, I'm back, second podcast. This is quite exciting, isn't it? Uh, my name is Stacy, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Stacy J Lou. I'll pop it on the screen because it's a bit of a weird spelling. Um, I've moved ends of the dining room today. It's a bit it's a bit cloudy and rainy outside today. It's a bit miserable, um, so I think the light's a bit better down this end. Um, but I hope there seems to be a bit of a halo going on over here. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see everything that I have to show you. Um, I've made notes today. Look. So hopefully I won't sort of bumble along too much. Um, and apologies for my sort of dishevelled hair. Um, I've washed it this morning. I don't normally wash my hair till a Sunday. So I've washed it on a Saturday. So I feel a bit all out of sorts. Um, I know it's like when you know you have a routine and then because we've got plans next, um, because of the plans we've got coming up, I had to wash my hair today and, and I feel like I feel all out of sync. I'm sure some of you know what I mean. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you to everyone that subscribed. Like, I think I've got over 60. That's, that's wow, for my first time. Um, I was really pleased. I kept just um, getting the emails popping up and I was like, oh, another one, another one. <laughs> it's really exciting. And all the lovely comments. Um, yeah, it's really nice. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't going to... Um, Okay, so Ollie and Bella's just sent me a message. So excuse me while I just flick it out of the way. Oh, there we go, it's gone. Um, she'll laugh now, because she sent me a message right in the middle of my podcast and disrupted my train of thought. Thanks, Cherie. Um, so I'm a bit earlier than I was planning to do. I was gonna do it every couple of weeks, but next weekend is my daughter's 13th birthday. And I'm not gonna get the chance to vlog, whereas normally I would you know, we'd celebrate her birthday on the Saturday and then on the Sunday I might be free. Uh, this year, because of the limit, COVID limitations, we're only allowed six in a household in the UK. And so in our house, we've got five of us, which is a bit naff. So we're having to split up all the family coming round. So she's gonna have some family on Saturday morning, then her friends on Saturday afternoon and then some more family Sunday morning and another some more family Sunday afternoon. So it's going to be a really packed weekend. Um, so I won't be doing a podcast next weekend. So I thought I'd come on today. <clears throat> I won't have quite as much to show you, um, but I have dug out some old stuff, old whips that I've forgotten about. But, um, so I'll show you those. Um, someone asked, a comment last week, sorry, I didn't make a note of who it was, a um, bit about the history of my knitting and crochet. So I started knitting when I was about 12 years old. Um, my grandma taught me. She used to knit those um, Jean, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the books. But they were books of like characters. So, um, and she'd, she'd knit them all up like clowns and dolls and things like that. And so she taught me to knit and she'd give them away, she used to give them away for, to charities as raffles and things like that. Um, and I'll show you next time I podcast my, my, my favourite one, the one that's um, lasted since I was 14. It's like a topsy turvy Cinderella doll. I'm so proud of it. It's, it's, it's wonderful. It's belongs, it's in my girls' room now. So I'll show you that next week. Um, and then as I sort of got into my late teens, I stopped knitting. It wasn't quite so cool. Um, so I didn't do it then. And then I, when I had my daughter 13 years ago, <clears throat> I met the lovely Cherie from Ollie and Bella. Um, at our, our kids were doing like um, a music. We maybe went, go around someone's house and we'd take our kids around to do little music and dancing. And she was heavily into crochet. So she showed me she sort of got me into crochet um, and YouTube taught me that. So then I started crocheting and I was like, crochet so quick, love it. I can just produce masses of stuff in a very short space of time. So I did lots and lots of crochet and then knitting became really popular again. And I was seeing it everywhere on Instagram and I knew I could knit and I still had all my grand's old needles and I had lots of yarn. 
So I thought I'd start up knitting again. So I've probably been knitting for about maybe two years I've been knitting again. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my, my background. So let's move on to finished objects. Object, I only have one. So I finished my Hermione Everyday Socks. Let me get them out the bag. They're in my lovely wool warehouse bag. Um, these are such a lovely pattern to knit out. I really, it's such a mindless pattern um, and it was so easy to memorize. So it, it was lovely TV knitting. So here they are. Um, I'll show the pattern close up, look at that. It's lovely, so I did a two by two um, rib and then the pattern, I've got a contrast heel, a lovely color and a contrast toe, yeah. So there they are, and I, I, have, I have two of them, two. So they count as a finished object, I've sewn in all the ends, I haven't worn them yet, um, but they are finished. Um, so the pattern is Hermione Everyday Socks by Erica, Erica Luda, um, and the yarn, so this is how much I've got left. Still got quite a good size, quite a good size ball left there. And that's how much I've got left of my mini. So quite a lot of that. And it's Vicky Brown's designs. I'll show you the labels this week because it turns out it wasn't back to front. So we should be fine. So yeah, it's a Vicky Brown designs. Um, January, January the Yarn Book Club. Again, it was a stash, but it was a stash buy, so I don't know which January. And it's Oh, I didn't realise that, look. It's 100% superwash merino. Can you read that? I, I don't know if that's coming out. Oh, I don't know why it won't focus. Does that make it any better? People put their hand up behind things, don't they? No, I don't think you can see that. But it's 100% superwash merino. They are so soft. Um, I can't wait to wear those. I'm gonna wear them this week now I've shown you. So that's my finished object. Um, I won't show you all the whips from last week because I haven't touched my staple linen top or my um, animals. Um, I just haven't had time this week. But I have been working on my Rylite socks. So I printed off the pattern this time. Oh, I can show you, I feel so prepared. So these are the Rylite. You can see the beautiful, it's black and white, but they're the Rylite socks and they're by Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. I think last time I just cast on the cuff of the second sock. So I, there goes my needle. Uh, luckily not one with um, stitches on it. Um, and I am just turning the heel. So I don't know what type of heel this is, but you don't, um, you only slip at the beginning of each row and then you just knit across, so you're not sort of knit, slip, knit, slip, which I've done on other socks. Um, so I don't know if there's a, a name for this heel, but yeah, so the, the pattern's coming out. There's the actual pattern side. So they're coming on, so I should get those finished quite soon. I'm just gonna pick up my, hook, my needle from the floor. Hello. So please, with that. I've dropped it again. I'm gonna leave it there now. I'm not gonna keep bending down to pick that up. Um, and what else have I got? Oh, I've got a new whip. So I finished the Hermione Everyday Socks. So then I started, decided to, I was gonna cast on my Strictly Socks. And I have. So these are the, so every year, Starry Eyes Alley, who is Little Drops of Wonderful, hosts a Strictly Sock Along. Um, which is Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars, I think, in the US. And I think the idea is that you just you knit when it's on. Um, I haven't watched it yet, but I've started because, I, yeah, they were just a beautiful pattern and I really wanted to start those. I'm trying to find, oh, it's so pale, you won't be able to see that on the pattern. Um, and they are, the pattern is the Lola Socks by Jules of So Sweet Violet. And it's all, Jules is um, donating three pound of every pattern to a cause called Bill's Bus, um, which is 
Gaina, I'm trying to remember all this, Gaina from Tales of Cuckoo Land's son um, goes to a special needs school and they need a minibus. Um, and so the pattern, um, they're donating funds from the pattern to go towards that. So that's a great cause. Um, so I did download the official pattern. And the yarn I'm using for this is this one here. And it is a Giddy Knits yarn. And it was one of her, um, she does a Through the Decade. She was doing a Through the Decades. I think she still is actually. She's just released the 1990s is up for sale. Um, but she's doing a Through the Decades yarn. And this was, oh, it's a Nostalgia Club, not Through the Decades, Nostalgia Club. And this was the 1920s. And this is the Tutankhamun colorway. So you can see all their like green and little bits of red. And there's sort of like some blue in there. So, and it's really quite a gold colour. Um, the light's not good today. I'm really sorry, but it's the only chance I've got to do the podcast. So, um, yeah, it's a really golden colour. So it looks like Tutankhamun's tomb. Um, and that's, that's Giddy Yarns. And that's the details of the colourway. I hope that comes out all right. Um, I'm on my first sock. So yeah, I've just done a two by two rib. That's what that's what the pattern called for. Um, and you can can you see the how the pattern's coming out on the sock? It's just a four round repeat, um, and three of the rounds are, are, are really really mindfulness, and I just need to concentrate on the third round, um, which makes it it is quite mindfulness. So I need to concentrate sort of every every four stitches, every four rows. So yeah, I've started those, so that's quite exciting. Yellow's not normally my colour. I wouldn't wear it up near my face, it doesn't suit me. But on my feet, I think we can wear any colour, can't we? Because, you know, their feet. I don't think feet really care what colour we wear on them. So that's my current whips that I've been working on. I did say I was going to show you a couple of old whips that I dug out. So a few years ago, gosh, I think it was five years ago now, Stylecraft Yarns released a lily pond cow. I feel like I'm really close to the camera, move back a bit. Um, released a lily pond cow uh, with their yarns. Now I started it, but I didn't finish it. I, I just um, I just couldn't do it. I found it, it was fine, but I got, was getting bored and I wanted to move on to other projects. So what I did was knitted it up into two squares. I'll show you. This is crochet, I didn't knit, I crocheted. This is a crochet project. So if I, which way around does it go? Here we go. If I show you the square, I'll come back a bit and show you. And I'll show you, I'll show you close up, Put the chair back in. So it's like, this is like the top row. I'd like the, can you see? Oh, it's, it's, it's a really gorgeous pattern. So there were, there were sort of stripes like this, and then there were squares in the middle. So that's one square. And then that's like the middle square. I can't see what I'm showing you. And uh, that's the other square. And then again at the bottom, it's just striped. And I've got two of those. The other one's got slightly different squares in the middle, which way round is it? That way round. So we've got that one, that one, and that one. And the plan is I think I'm going to make a cushion. So I've got these two, two really nice one, one. Whoop. I showed you the front one twice and I dropped the back one. Let me do that again. Okay, so let's see if I can get it away. One, Two. I have two squares, uh, which I'm going to um, crochet together and make a cushion. So I just need to measure it and get a really nice insert. Um, I don't want to pad it with fluff because then it, you, you can't wash it. So I need to find a cushion insert. Um, so I thought I'd dig that out because it's just, it's finished. All the ends are sewn in. I just need to um, find an insert and it'll be a really, really beautiful cushion. Um, but I think you can still find the pattern on the internet if you search for Lily Pond Cal by Stylecraft. Um, yeah, and you can either make the blanket or you can just make parts of it like I have and 
turn it into a blanket, a cushion. It's gonna turn it into a cushion. I thought I'd show you something else I do, I've do. i done. I haven't touched this for ages, but maybe getting it out will encourage me to move on again. And this is a little bit of English paper piecing, um, which is basically hexagons. It's sewing. So you have these little hexagons. So if I can show you a blank one. Here we go. So you cut out these sort of hexagon shapes and then you've got these little bits of paper inside or cardboard or whatever and you sort of baste. Can you see I've basted it? So just rough rough um, stitching around it um, and then you sew them together like this and as you sew around a whole one can you see you take the you take the cardboard you take the paper out and then move on to the next one so you're left with I don't know what this is going to be I have got an idea to turn them into hearts um, and put them on the wall on my girls walls to have some hearts but this isn't heart shape now this is like um a weird shape and I was gonna make a massive bedspread but I, I just I don't think I'm gonna have the motivation to do that so I think I want to make smaller hearts so possibly I can turn this into a heart can I if I add bits on that could be the bottom maybe maybe um, I've got a stack ready to go I've got a stack of them um, of beautiful fabrics all all ready to, yeah, all ready to go. So it won't take me much to do, take me much more to sort of crack on with it. So I think I might do some work on that. Maybe not by the next podcast, but hopefully by Christmas. I'll have done some work on that one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nearly smashed a bowl on the middle of my dining table. Um, right, acquisitions. I, I move through this so quickly, don't I? I I'm, not a, I'm not a big, I chat, but I chat really quickly. So if you need me to slow down, just tell me next time and I'll slow down a bit. Um, acquisitions, I have some acquisitions. <laughs> I wasn't gonna buy anything. And I thought I've got to, because I'm doing a podcast now. Um, and I can't not have any acquisitions, that would just be, just be rude. So I've bought stuff for you to show you um, and happily I will then get to knit with it. So it's win-win. So what have I got first? So I have bought some yarn to do um, Halloween socks. I've never done Halloween socks before. It's not normally my favourite holiday season. I, I like bonfire night. Um, I like 5th of November, Guy Fawkes night in the UK. Um, but Halloween's not normally my bag. But there are so many pretty yarns. It's just a good opportunity to make a sock. So I have got this one from Giddy Yarns. It's a sock blank. I've never, I've never knitted with a sock blank before. Um, can you see the colours? Look at that. Um, and this one is called Toil and Trouble, and it's a 75-25 uh, mix. Um, yeah, that, that's really beautiful. It's going to make a gorgeous pair of socks, probably two, a pair for myself and a pair for little ones, because that's tends to be what I can get out of a skein. So they're gonna be a cast on once I finish my Strictly socks. Um, and I pop round to my friend Cherie's house on Tuesday night. She made me a little bag, a little Halloween bag. Look at this, it's so cute. Look at all the little pumpkins and bats and broom, what's that? Oh, maybe toffee apples and things like that. You can see Ollie and Bella, she's stitched her little name. And there's a cute little, look, look at that. Little skull stitch marker. And inside, oh, it's lovely and orange. So yeah, that's my, um, I'm going to put my Halloween socks in there. So thank you, Cherie. That will go to good use. Um, I, <clears throat> couple of, oh. so, Last week, I was talking about sales, and I found a couple of sales, yarn sales were happening this week, and I can't resist a sale. So I've got 
I've got one that hasn't arrived, so I'll be able to show you that in the next podcast. But this one arrived, and it's from Blue Fern Yarns. Where's the other bit? Um, so let me let me show you her card. Blue Fern Yarns is new to me, but I follow her podcast. Um, she does a lovely little podcast talking about her knitting. So this is oh, it's Shannon. So that's Blue Fern Yarns. That's her card. And there she is, there's everywhere you can find her. Oh, I'm shaking. Um, and I got a little, she threw in a little mini for me. Look, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Um, but this is the colourway I got. Um, oh, it, it's called Watermelon, as you can probably tell. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's lovely. Look, there's a few little, little speckles, but beautiful greens and pinks. Um, and it's a 75-25 mix. Blue Fern Yarns. I don't know what to make with this one. Um, I'm trying to build a stash up. I don't have a very big stash. So I'm trying to, every now and then when there's like a sale or, I don't always like to buy in sales. I know, you know, it's also good to pay full price for something. Um, but I'm trying to build my stash. So I'm shopping in the sales where I can. But I think this would make a really nice hat or cowl. I mean, it would make great socks too. It would make great anything, wouldn't it? So I'm gonna add that to my stash. No plans for that one just yet, but watch this space. Um, and then um, I'm doing a Christmas swap with a friend and we ordered um, a whole bunch of um, minis from Kate Celine. I'm doing it with Ollie and Bella, um, the swap. I'm sure she won't mind me saying because she's got hundreds of um, swaps and advents this year. We're going to have a very, very busy Christmas podcast with all the advents we're doing. Anyway, we ordered um, some minis um, from Kate Celine and they all come, you can choose, and we've got them all in a bag, all wrapped up, so you don't know what they are. So, well, I do know what they are because I picked them, but she wraps them up so you don't know which is which when you open them. So we're going to do that for Christmas. But Kate Celine threw in um, a couple of little extras, a little extra in each each of our purchases, um, and these are mine. I think they're little five gram, little five gram minis. But look at the colours. Look at that one. Oh, so many. It's not coming out as um, very clear. I don't know if I can mix it any clearer. No. Um, and this beautiful pink one. Look at the colours on that one. Look at that. So I've got those couple of little five gram minis, which will be great for a, a toe, a toe on a sock or something else. Um, and that's it for my acquisitions for yarn. I did buy a new book this week. Um, so on BBC Two, I've been watching Nadia Bakes, which is a cooking program and Nadia um, won our Great British Bake Off, which is a programme we have in the UK, and she won it a few years ago, and she's done really well for herself. She's now got her own cooking shows, and she's releasing books. And so I was a little bit addicted to some of the patterns that she, some patterns, <sighs> recipes that she's been showing. So I bought her book. Look at that, Nadia Bakes. Um, oh my God. I'm going to make two of the recipes in here for my daughter's birthday. So, you know, I said her birthday's over two, two days next week. So I thought a traditional cake won't quite work. It'll look great for the first people that see it, but the people that come on Sunday afternoon, there'll be like three slices left and they'll be like, woohoo, happy birthday, sure. Here's a three slice cake and it'll look a bit naff. So I'm going to do cupcakes um, and some brownies. And I think she can then blow out a cupcake and it'll look, it'll look a bit better, won't it? And it won't look so so mean for the people that come on Sunday. Um, and the recipe, oh, look at this one. So this one on the back, can you see that? I'm gonna bring it in really close because it's so delicious. So I'm gonna make these. And they're a bit unusual because they've got a strawberry in the middle of them. They've got a biscuit, a biscuit base, a strawberry. The cake mix is made with clotted cream rather than butter. Oh, oh I'm sal salivating already. Um, and the frosting on the top, I'm looking at it. The frosting on the top is um, 
made with strawberry ice cream and into a buttercream instead of strawberry flavoring it's strawberry ice cream they sound so delicious um so i'm gonna make those and there's some chocolate brownies in here as well that she's done i'm gonna make those so i will i will take some pictures and i'll put them on my instagram and you can salivate for yourself <laughs> and enjoy looking at them um so that's everything I had written down. Um, I haven't got an awful lot more to say. Um, we have a nice weekend coming up. Um, so it's Saturday morning. Oh, why do I never say the date? Today is Saturday the 3rd of October. Um, my husband's off, no, he's working late shifts today and tomorrow, but, so he's off in the morning. So he's taking the kids out today so I can, so I can do this. And this afternoon we're going to, um, where I live in Plymouth, there's a new museum opened called The Box, and it's only been open a week. We went last weekend because we got preview tickets, um, but we couldn't take all, the, all our family because there wasn't enough tickets available. So today we're taking the girls, and they have a, a full size replica of a woolly mammoth. Now that's, it's amazing. It's, we saw it last week, and there's, there's pictures on my Instagram. It's huge. Um, and the girls are going to be so excited to see it. Um, but I did ask, I asked them what they were most excited about seeing. And my youngest said the woolly mammoth. Um, and my seven-year-old said she's most excited to see the giant spider um, and see how big her hand is against it. I put that picture on my Instagram as well. There's a picture of my hand against the giant spider to show how big it was. So she wants to see a spider and the other one wants to see a woolly mammoth. She's not my child. I don't like spiders. <laughs> um yeah Ooh. they do they do bother me i've got conkers all over my house and i've been using peppermint essence um in the hope to just try and push them away because if they come in i'm not very nice to them um so I, i'm happy if they stay outside that's fine i don't want them inside so i'm trying my best to keep them outside um if anyone knows i, I don't know if this peppermint and conkers work I haven't seen one since I started using them. Um, but if anyone knows of any other methods that are equally environmentally friendly, then let me know. Um, yeah, so we're going to the museum this afternoon and then I'm gonna knit this evening. And tomorrow my kids have swimming lessons. And then, yeah, nothing, nothing Sunday afternoon. So that's lovely. And then I think next week I'm going out with my mum for a coffee. And then it's my daughter's birthday, so I've got lots of baking to do. So there won't be quite as much knitting next week. So I hope to be back in a couple of weeks, but we do have something on in two weekends time. So it might be a nighttime vlog. I don't know what the light will be like. I've got some um, like spotlight lamps. So I might, I might have a go and see if a nighttime podcast if I did I say vlog I meant podcast a nighttime podcast will work yeah so I think that's it this is nearly half an hour long now wow I've talked for half an hour and I've had no kids interrupting me it's lovely isn't it so I'm gonna wrap it up I'm gonna go in um, and I hopefully I'll get this up for you later hope you all have a good week and yeah thank you for watching bye